Welcome to Explosive Enterprises, and today I want to talk about gas efficiency. I know that might sound like a strange topic, I mean, we've demonstrated efficiency testing on our channel, but I've seen some misconceptions in the community, and I'm concerned that we may have helped contribute to them by not fully explaining exactly what it is we're testing and what sort of results we're looking to get out of those tests. So, when people talk about gas efficiency, it's usually measured as how many shots does a gun get before it stops fully cycling. And that's our most basic test on our channel, just one shot per second until it can no longer cycle far enough to consistently feed. That's not really testing efficiency. If we wanted to just test efficiency, what we would do is fire a certain number of shots at a very slow cadence to rule out cooldown, and we'd measure the amount of gas when we're done and see how many shots we got, how much gas was used, and then we could assign a number to that, how many fractions of a gram of gas were used per shot, or rather how many shots per gram. When we're testing until the gun fails to cycle though, what we're really testing is cooldown. Rather, how many shots does the gun get before it's so cold that it's no longer capable of generating enough pressure to fully cycle? Now there are two characteristics that are going to apply to both efficiency and cooldown. Obviously, how much gas the gun uses per shot is going to affect how quickly it cools down, and also how much gas it has in the magazine uh, as a linear relationship with how much thermal mass it has to offset cooldown. You double the amount of gas, you double the number of shots, you have the gas consumption, you also probably double the number of shots. But where it gets weird is that there are some other characteristics that we also need to take into account. So for example, uh, since what we're dealing with here is essentially minimum input pressure, rather what is the minimum pressure that the gun will still cycle at, uh, that depends a lot on the seal quality in the bulk carrier. If the gun doesn't seal very well, then it's going to need a higher pressure in order to develop enough power for the next shot. If it has too strong of a spring, it might not have enough mass to actually fully cycle. And conversely, if the mass is too low, if we have too light of a bolt carrier, it might be efficient, but it might start failing to fully cycle sooner. And then there's also design considerations like the presence of a valve knocker lock. As we demonstrated in our VFC MP5 video, that gun actually allows you to determine whether the valve knocker lock is active or inactive. And when it is active, it consumes more gas per shot, but it's able to generate more pressure to cycle, and that enables it to cycle at lower input pressure. That is what we're testing at the most basic level with this efficiency. What is the minimum pressure that the gun will run at, and how long does it take for it to reach that level? One other thing that's going to affect that is how is the magazine designed? Because if we're shooting this at room temperature, a two-part magazine with a plastic shell is going to be insulated. It's not going to be able to recover from cooldown, whereas a metal magazine is going to draw heat from the ambient environment. And so when we do that slow fire test, it is warming back up as we shoot it. That's going to allow it to go for longer before it hits that critical temperature where it no longer produces enough pressure for the gun to cycle. Now this might all sound academic. I mean, why do we matter? If the gun stops cycling after 30 shots, we don't really care whether it's completely out of gas or whether it's just hit its minimum pressure. I mean, it's not working. We need to regas. we need to reload anyways. Well, it matters for two reasons. First, troubleshooting. And this is why we do several different tests, not just that single keep shooting it one round per second until it no longer cycles. It's why we also do tests where we allow it to warm back up to ambient temperature, allow it to rebuild that pressure. It's why we do full auto testing where we're not giving it any time to recover from cool down. Uh, it's why we also test it at low temperature. So if you're having problems with a gun and you need to figure out exactly what you can do to improve its performance, you should do those kinds of tests to figure out whether the problem is that you're running out of gas or whether it's just hitting that critical temperature too soon. The easiest way to do that is to just do strings of fire. Just shoot until it no longer cycles and then give it time to warm back up to room temperature and then keep doing that repeatedly. If you're able to get a if you're able to do that a couple of times in a row, the problem is more likely to cool down than it is running out of gas. Uh, if you have access to a scale, you can also just weigh the magazine when you're done shooting. If it still has like three quarters of its gas but left, but it's not fully cycling, then obviously that cooldown is the problem. And so how you fix this is going to depend on whether the problem is efficiency or uh, the minimum input pressure, although there are some things that will apply to both. Uh, so for example, if you use a weaker recoil spring, that'll somewhat improve efficiency, but it'll have a much stronger effect on that minimum pressure. Improving seals, if you have uh, some kind of leakage, will affect both of them. 
You can increase the bolt carrier mass, which will decrease efficiency, but may actually increase the number of shots you get before it stops cycling because it has more momentum to complete the cycle, even at low pressure. You may notice that these are the same tips that we gave in our winterization video, and that's because this is fundamentally the same thing. When you're winterizing a gun, you're trying to modify it so that it can cycle at lower pressure. And similarly, if you want to get a gun to be able to shoot for more, to experience more cooldown before it stops working, you're going to do the same thing. Try and get it to work at a lower pressure. Uh, of course, you can also compensate by just using stronger gas in either case, and there are guns that may be kind of borderline at room temperature on propane, but perform much better if you just use a slightly stronger gas because they have a very high minimum input pressure. And uh, that ties in with the second reason why it's good to know this difference is understanding the impact of ambient temperature. So for example, uh, the Tokyo Marui MWS and the VFC ARs are constantly battling it out head-to-head. -head. We see a lot of pointless arguments online. They're both great for different reasons. We're going to cover that in a future video. But one of the things that we see a lot is that the MWS is efficient. The MWS is not efficient. In fact, if you actually do that measurement I mentioned of shots per gram, the VFC ARs are significantly more efficient. What the MWS has is that it cycles at a much lower pressure without modification. So with VFC ARs, if it's at all cool out, you will find that they can pretty quickly hit a point where they no longer have enough pressure to fully cycle if you're doing rapid fire, if you're doing a lot of full auto. Whereas what the MWS is very good at is getting a consistent fill every time and then running until it reaches absolutely no gas left in the magazine. So that's what makes the MWS a really great all-weather gun because it'll cycle down to very low temperature, whereas the VFC ARs can sometimes need a little more tinkering. Similarly, the VFC AK-74M that we praised, we've seen a lot of people say it's so efficient because it got over 400 shots in our test. It's not efficient. Again, in terms of how much gas it uses per shot. What it has is enormous magazines that hold a ton of gas. It operates at very low input pressure because it has very good seals in the nozzle and it has enough mass to be able to complete that cycle. And then maybe most importantly, it has that one piece metal magazine that is able to constantly pull heat from the ambient air. And that's why when we did the slow fire test, it was able to just keep going for so long because the whole time we're shooting, it was still warming back up. I know this has been kind of a ramble, so the basic takeaway is that if you have a gun that isn't getting as many shots as you would like per fill, the first thing to do is to figure out whether it's actually running out of gas, which is an efficiency issue, or if it's just hitting a point where it can no longer cycle due to cooldown, which is a minimum pressure issue. Having a better understanding of how your gun works will help you with figuring out how to winterize it and get the most out of it in general. Hope you found this useful, and as always, thanks for watching.